I'm a contractor, and so normally I'll like, you know, work like a 40 or 50 hour work week and then do rehearsal and writing on top of it. And so I'm trying to like change my life a little bit so that I'm either building or writing. When you hear Chrissy's songs, you're hearing an experience. They have a communal sense of courage to like be perceived however which way people are going to perceive them as long as they're writing sincere music that they feel emotionally invested in. Bear in mind. You know, you're not making anybody listen to your music. You make your music and then if it reaches somebody, it reaches somebody. But I mean, it makes you feel something. That in and of itself is interesting. It's a comfort to see people struggling with you, to like remember that regardless of the outcome, there is a value in expression. It's a steady element in Chrissy's life that's just not going away, you know? The platform of interactivity between her and her support network is music, and that's kind of a beautiful thing. So my name is Chrissy, I'm in Thin Lips, and we're recording our song So Stone for an episode of Shaking Through. Instead of shaking through, we recorded the band Thin Lips and the song So Stoned. So Thin Lips is Mikey Tajan, my little brother on drums, Kyle Pulley on bass, and for this session, my friend Francis from Hop Along like sang and co-produced. I like yeah. that room mic up. Did you just turn that up? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really cool. We met long ago and we just connected very quickly because we felt comfortable right away saying very personal things to each other. And when we talk about songwriting, we just like click very quickly. I mean, do you, do you like that sound? Or? That's what I, I was just trying to let people try what they wanted to try. Not really. It's really special to me to be able to connect with other women who play music. And she's just become one of my best buds. I don't have any other friends like that that I think about music with in that capacity that aren't. Kyle and Mikey, who are like my brothers, who I've been playing music with since I was 22, you know? And Mikey longer, because he's my real brother. When we first heard the demo, it was sort of lethargic sounding, and I liked that. And when I commented on that, Chrissy immediately said, yeah, the guys will probably convince me to do it faster. So that's where the idea came to record it to tape at the faster speed and potentially slow it down. I, something like that, yeah. So fast. Sorry, I'm really bad at moving keys of things. Why don't you come in here and see what you think of that tone? We'll see what the slowdown sounds like. When you slow down drums off of tape, the pitch lowers, so everything sounds a little bit beefier. Yeah, uh, compressor on the rooms just to see what it's like to get some punkiness. The cymbals seem like darker and wooshier, and everything's a little elongated. Um, it's ballsy. I think it sounds sick. I think the vibe. It's just a little too melodic sounding to me, and it misses the. Yeah, I punch. think we don't have it coming back at the right tempo. Yeah, yeah. I think that speed is okay. If it was like between 117 and 123, that would feel good to me. Because the element of comfort can be dialed in with just a beat per minute faster or a beat per minute slower. If it's not a dramatic shift in the feel of the song, it's usually the right thing to do. Like you should let it be as chill as it can without plotting. Because you want those harmonies to like pop too. I want the harmonies to pop and I want everything to breathe. I think we should try it at 121 and then let's sing to it and make sure that the harmonies have space. And if not, we'll back it back up. Recording to the tape machine allowed us to record the song at a speed that Kyle and Mikey were comfortable with. By slowing down that performance, we could get it back into the range that Chrissy originally intended for it to be. I would be curious to see how you could pull it off and have it be more intense of an effect. But realistic concerns would be that you need to play it so fast <laughs> to get it to slow down to the tempo that you needed, that I'm just not sure how possible it is. In the end, the final take was recorded at 121. 
the tape machine was slowed down to 119. So it's not as much as if we would have slowed it down by like seven beats per minute. But, you know, the cymbals are a little bit elongated and darker and the drums are a little thicker and deeper. So people might find that the things they typically do with our drums are a little different and it's gonna be because the tape was slowed down. It's not driving the amp as much as it was the last take, is it? Uh, I agree. Treble is so sick. It is. Kyle, as soon as he went to redo that bass in the control room, was able to hear and deliver a really precise bass track. Yeah, Kyle, that rocks. You like that vibe? Yeah. Cool. And then the only other thing is, Mikey has like a stray kick drum in the first chorus that I should like just listen to and lock into it so it doesn't sound like a mistake. Yeah, I gotcha. The nice thing about Kyle recutting his bass is that we were able to put it through our API 312 preamp, which we usually use for drums, so we can't use it on bass usually because we're tracking at the same time. That preamp, in my opinion, is just perfect for bass. It's so full range. I end up doing way less to a bass if I track it through that preamp because it's just more balanced and doesn't hype anything really. The main guitar playing through the whole song is Christie's AC30, which is actually maybe the best AC30 I've ever recorded. I feel like I always have a problem with those amps being very brittle. So I even like preemptively mic'd it to like adjust for that. I had the Coles 4038 pretty close to the grill to just try and like get some proximity effect. But something about it was just like very smooth and balanced. So I was able to like pull that back. To totally, I think it sounds sick. I love that guitar and I love that amp. Thank you, me too. <laughs> I usually don't like AC30s. Oh, really? You know, yeah. I've been playing at the same tubes for like seven years, so I think they're just a little darker. Yeah. They're like kind of stretched out. I think about the drums and the bass in a way where I'm like, I want it to feel like this. But guitars, I love. Guitars are my favorite thing. I love them so much. I think about tone constantly. I think about small, nuanced things. I'm not a trained musician, so it's a lot of times like the way something feels, the way that it sounds to me, you know? Oh. Yeah. Okay, yes. Cool. You go back there? This is like zooming in on Google Maps, this song. I feel like I'm just like, I have no idea where I am anymore. <laughs> I literally just play such an amalgamation of all of these parts no, that I am not used to it's playing okay. just the rhythm, so That's it's cool. taking me a second. It's hard without, I, when I when there's no vocal, I get lost so quickly. <laughs> uh, Especially because I'm like, the guitar sounds sick. It sounds so sick, and then I'm like, oh. I think what we should do is do a scratch vocal so we can like hear where we are in the song. Let's do it. This song is about, I had a girlfriend who I really care about and hope that she's happy. But we had kind of like gotten back together and broken up a bunch of times and we moved in together and it went really bad. You know, when you really care about somebody, that's hard, but loving somebody doesn't mean that that's healthy or like it's good for you. I think stability meant something different to both of us. Like, stability to me doesn't mean having money. Stability to me means, like, having a community of people that are thriving, that, like, if something happens, you know, I know somebody will take care of me. I would take care of somebody if something happened. Pack your things in boxes that you just unpack to live in our You know, play music, I'm kind of transient. I love real big, but when it comes down to it, that doesn't feel safe to some people, and that's okay too. Some people want something more traditional feeling, but like, I kind of find comfort and safety in something that's a little different than that. It's... It's interesting. Sounds like a spooky western. Let's yeah. try yeah. it. It's still slightly like butts up against the bendiness of the one that's in the right speaker, but. Chrissy had two guitar parts that were designed to interlock. When they were both electric guitars, they were not locking. 
kind of. But maybe that's why the acoustic would have worked as like a lower one because it's not try it's not fighting for the same kind of position. Yeah, it's like try, the same. Let's try the acoustic. I was skeptical of it. All of our sounds are so brash and so harsh. That's definitely gonna make it hard to hear the supple high end of an acoustic guitar in the mix. It asserts itself almost like an upright bass line, except plucked hard on an acoustic guitar. Yeah. That's cool. Maybe double it, just to get it to... to... I love that. So, you know, we recorded it really close. We have it kind of heavily compressed. Ended up being really cool. Moving in was hard because like the space that was my house was then all of a sudden kind of a scary space, which was weird for me because I'm a very anxious person. I was actually really agoraphobic growing up. It started when I was three or four. When my parents would drive on the highway, I was really afraid of big hills and I remember feeling like I was like being crushed. It kind of escalated to a point where I couldn't go outside and when I did, I had like all these rules about how it had to be. I was just like really afraid to be afraid because I didn't know how to handle it. I remember talking to my therapist and being like, I just spend all this time thinking about all of my friends who could do basic things like drive a car, like take a subway. And she was like, well, it doesn't count if it's easy for you. That's not what being brave is. Being brave is doing something even though you're afraid of it. So UPenn had a cognitive therapy program and I went there. Then I got kind of like well enough to go to college and I kind of like backslid a couple times and they started playing in Dangerous Ponies and Kyle was in that band and Mikey was in that band. Our first tour, we did seven days to Austin and back. That was terrifying. I took Klonopin the whole time and laid on the floor in the back of the van and I was like a crazy person, but I kind of started to learn that it's okay to be afraid of things and how to expose myself to those things. Come on and try with you anymore. Bear in mind. The music has helped me overcome so many of my fears, like traveling. I just took a plane to Europe to go on tour. When my friends found out that I went on a plane for the first time, like they were in shock. But I'm really different now. I feel lucky for that. I really learned that it's okay to be afraid of things, like wildly phobic of things, and that I probably can't help it. Like oftentimes my body is very nervous, but I can't help what I do about it. The U67, I think for Christie's voice, was just a little too bright in the high mids. She has like a very focused upper mid range in her voice. So straight away I just like, almost ran out and put a ribbon in AAR84. My mouth's right here. I okay. need more allowance, yo, to lay hee-hoo. Why? Because uh, possibly. I Possibly. <laughs> Francis, you're my favorite person. A ribbon mic is like the perfect way to solve that problem without trying to adjust too much of how they're singing. That like tames that harshness, but maintains everything else basically. It Intention to become someone you spite, someone you loathe. I was going through an AML EZ 1073 and into a distressor. Was it that bad? There's a certain amount of life that they all knew they wanted to get out of the vocal by distorting it in the mix. So we actually gave it to her distorted in her headphones through Matt's distortion pedal. My if you like singing into something that's breaking up as you get louder and it's more exciting, it makes perfect sense to just put that in the headphones, even if you're going to change it. We were recording her vocal relatively clean, but she was hearing it distorted so she could adjust her performance to that distortion. I love the uh, the ends of certain words. You're like, uh, like you're kind of like <laughs> dying or like bending. Or like dying. dying. At 
every yeah. time. It Dude, sounds awesome. I, I was gonna say like the ends of some phrases like where you like, I love when you sang so stone. It was just like kind of like giving up almost like. It, right. I like. How I want those mellow. parts to be kind of like sweeter and quieter. Yeah, and I mean, harmonized like, upon. In general, I think like for the whole first portion of the song, like how mellow you are really suits it. And I think we can like stack some really beautiful yeah. harmonies under that. Some really beautiful. Beautiful, Francis. Really I beautiful. understand you. Thank you, Kyle, for translating. From Delaware County. Yeah. In a lot of the songs Chrissy's been writing lately, there's this mellowing out in the melodies. Like it's almost just like the song is allowing itself to happen and it's taking its time. And you could say I always leave. And you could say I. So I'm not gonna do always leave. I'll leave that to you. I think if we alternated, that it could be cool. I love how her voice sounds. And I love how our voices sound together too. Like, and that's such a special thing when you find somebody that when you sing together, they kind of blend in this weird and strangely pretty way. My, this whole intro, should I just leave that to you? Because that was nice. Yeah, I, I think, think it's that distracting. That's better. Yeah, I think it's too distracting. When you have two lead singers like that trying to harmonize, it's like capturing lightning in a bottle. You're going to miss like seven out of 10 times, but you're gonna capture something really cool three out of 10 times. Pack your things in boxes that you just unpack to live in our That's what Francis did for an hour and a half. Just like shoot in the dark and know that like a lot of it wouldn't be kept, but the stuff that was kept was gonna be awesome. It's an amazing thing that we live in a day and age where everybody can make music. What that means is right now, everybody's learning how to find and make friendships and relationships that grow around the activity of collaboration. In the case of Thin Lips and Francis, recording music becomes one very potent platform for that relationship to grow in. That's what's special about today. Our friendship is in this like amazing place where it's like really blossoming and we're coming to know each other's work. I mean like you can explore a body of work and appreciate it all as like one flat surface, but to see like the order of the work as it's happening, you get this understanding of like what human beings are like. When I was younger, I didn't really make close friendships. But I thought the value of who I was would just all be in my work. And so I took everything like friendship and relationships and love for granted. The work can only do so much for you, but to be there for somebody. From the moment we met, Chrissy and I kind of passed that gift back and forth to each other. We have that desire in us to do that for one another. And it's done nothing but good, I think, for our lives and our work. Sometimes I think I know the best people. I have family that's great, love my brother. I have a chosen family that's great, queer family, a music family. Like I have so many people in my life that are wonderful and weird and loving and also willing to take risks because of the things and people that they love. And I feel like super lucky. It's very rare now that I like can't do something. But I still get nervous every time I play, every single time. And I've created my own systems to deal with my anxiety. But if I avoid doing those things, then I kind of end up back into that place where I am inside and not going outside again. You know, so it's important for me to do the things that scare me or else, like, what's the point, you know? The music is like my therapy. And I think it's a lot of people's therapy. I make music because I have to. I think it's just really important for my mental health and my heart and my head. Bear in mind. Weather Vane's Shaking Through series exists to support self-expression through the creative process of making and recording music. To download the multi-tracks recorded for this or any episode of Shaking Through, 
or to learn about Weather Vane Music, the nonprofit that produces this series, you can follow the links on the screen or go to weathervanemusic.org.